three. Come on, your, your marker might still be there. Right. Amen. Go on, Philippians chapter three. Amen. Philippians chapter three is where we're going to take our text. I'm on today. Glad to have Brother Marks back with us as well. Amen. He had been on injured reserve. Amen. But the Lord kept him. Amen, the Lord has kept it. All right, all right. I need you to, amen, turn to your neighbor. Make sure your neighbor has it. Amen. Come on, y'all not turning to. Nobody turning them, no. Come on, let's, let's make sure your neighbor has it. Amen. All right. Does, does, everybody neighbor have, does everybody neighbor have a Bible or a phone in their hand? If your neighbor does not have either one, please show them the word. Because I want to make sure, amen, that when they ask what the preacher talked about in church today, you can say he came out of the book of chapter number. There you go. All right. And if you're able to stand, I would like for you to stand. Now, when I was, when I was growing up in Pleasant Green, there were some things that Pastor McMillan did just drove me crazy. Come on, y'all to say amen. But now I find myself doing stuff he do. Brown boys, y'all need to stand. Amen. Come on, Pastor. We say, y'all too young to be sitting. Amen. Come on, Sonny. Come on up. All right. Philippians chapter 3. For these moments that we have together. I want to take a look at a few verses. I'm going to start at verse number one today. Amen. Further, my brothers and sisters, I rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again. It is a safeguard to you. Watch out for those dogs, those evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh. For it is who that have for it is we who are circumcision, circumcision, we who serve God by his spirit who boast in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh. Though I myself have reasons for such confidence, if someone thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, Paul says, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regards to the law. He also says, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church as righteousness based on the law, faultless. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is it more? I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things, I consider it garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but rich through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Verse 10, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and the participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in death, and so somehow attaining the resurrection from the dead. You may be seated. Y'all going to help today? Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. As folks are amen, coming in, amen. I want to just have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity to be in worship. We pray your word fall on good ground today that we would leave a little better than when we came in. Father, we ask that you allow your word to come with purpose, power, and passion. That there be any unchurched or unsaved today, that through the preaching of the gospel, somebody might accept you as Lord and Savior. This is your service prayer, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If I would just, if we would uh, tag the text today, as we talked on, with you on last week, just want to um, highlight a few things in the text that uh, we just didn't get to on last week. Uh, last week, we uh, the tag was moving forward in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Now it took some time last week, those are here, we kind of, kind of labored a little longer than usual. Amen, somebody. 
Amen. 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 Nobody else say amen. My kids will say amen because they told me all about it. Amen. On the way home. Daddy. <laughs> uh, somebody said it too. Pastor Show was long winded today, wasn't it? I'm looking at you. Put my glasses so I can see who said it. Let me get my glasses. Amen. Yeah. Moving forward in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, last week we shared with you uh, the how, how to move forward. Uh, Paul gives us last week how. This week we're going to look at why. We talked about last week how. By way of intro, we discussed how, you know, some of us have, uh, around this time, made some, some may call goals, uh, some call them resolutions, uh, some call them better lifestyle, better decision, better decision making, uh, whatever you call it. Um, the, the end result is just um, doing better than you was in 2019. And we talked about how some of us have made these decisions to live a little bit better than we did in 2019 in many areas you know, of our lives. It would be true to be told, I think there's several of us that are tired of the way we're living. There's a few of us that we discussed last week that, uh, you know, we just didn't like some areas of our lives and we're asking God that we can be a little bit better than we was in 2019. And since God allowed us to cross over to the 2020, just want to talk with you for about for a little bit um, as it relates, <laughs> as it relates, amen, the how, amen, the how and the why. Uh, the how, we talked about, uh, Philippians is the book of uh, uh, correction. We talked about last week by a quick review how Paul had to correct some things in the church, his young church. Uh, we talked about last week how uh, there was two women in the church that weren't getting along, y'all remember? I mean, come on, you talk back, that means I, we got it. That means we got it. Uh, there were two women who didn't get along. Y'all know that was unbelievable because we know everybody gets along in the church. But these two women were workers of the church. And for some reason, they couldn't get along. And Paul said, hey, y'all need to cut that out. Uh, he also had a message of joy. Uh, Paul says, look, no matter what I've been through, the Philippians, no matter what you go through, you always got to have joy. All throughout his writings, he talked about joy. And what's interesting about joy Paul says he was in prison when he talked about joy. What an odd place to talk about joy is to be behind prison walls. That, that seems kind of odd to me to be excited to have joy. But, but what Paul was saying is you can't let your circumstances dictate your praise. I don't know about you. Have been, I don't know if you've been there before. It looked like everything was going chaos around you. Circumstances didn't look good. But you did not let the world steal your joy. Matter of fact, I see a whole bunch of y'all here today. I know, I, I know some things that you're going through, but I couldn't tell because you still got your joy. Talked about last week. That's some folks that say, Pastor, I ain't got enough money to pay my bills, but you still got your joy. Somebody loved one went home and be with the Lord this week, but I, I couldn't tell because you still. Yeah, I think y'all got me. I think you got me. Somebody got a bad doctor's report and had to. Go to the doctor this week, but, but because you didn't let the doctor's report dictate how you feel, you're here in worship and you still, come on, are y'all going to help me today? You still got your joy. The book of Philippians is the book of correction it talks about. Also, it's a book of joy. We talked about how in, in our relationship with Jesus Christ, if we move forward in our relationship with Christ, then if our relationship with Christ is right, we who are the church, that means our relationship with the church will move forward. And if the church is moving forward, our community will move forward. And if the community is moving forward, our country will move forward and do the right thing. So we all kind of quiet. I'm, I'm praying, amen, that God will move on this country. Because there's some stuff going on right now. We show sure enough need his protection. Right? Y'all ain't watching the news. Let me tell you. There's reasons why we need his protection. We got a fool with a button in his hand that's causing problems. And because somebody else is causing problems, it's going to affect you and me. I think y'all know what I'm talking about. Paul says, how do you do it? Philippians, he talks about you got to forget your past. Is that about right? Somebody say, forget your past. That's in verse number 12. He says, look, you got to forget your past. 
In other words, Paul has some accomplishments in his past. He has some great things he had done, but then he also has some other things in his life that he wasn't too proud of. The text goes on to say that he persecuted the church. He wasn't proud of that. He was there when Stephen got stoned. He wasn't proud of that. He was there when they were persecuting Christians and stopping the gospel. He was not proud of that, but the text says he had to forget his past. He had to forget that he wrote over 13 books. He had to forget that he trained with the best of the best. Paul said, look, that's all in the past. I got to move forward. In order for me to move forward, I got to forget yes, the past. Now you got to forget the past, Paul said. What else? He said, you got to what? Look forward. Yes, the text says, and look, he said, I got I to I look forward to what God has in store for me. In verse number 13, he says, we must reach forward to what is ahead. If we're going to uh, grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ and move forward, we got to look ahead. In other words, Paul said, look, God's got so much in store for me right now. i got to keep looking because if I look back, I might hinder what God has for me. If I look back, we talked about we, he might stumble and fall because, you know, if you're looking back, you can't see what's in front of you. And, and the challenge, he says, look, church, in our relationship, we got to make sure we're looking forward. Now that we got to forget our past in last week's lesson, we also got to look forward. And the third thing we touched on last week is now that you're looking forward, it's good to look forward. But now the text says he had to press on. It's in the text in verse number 14. He said, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Jesus Christ. In other words, the English standard version says, I pursue all the goal that God has before me. In other words, Paul was telling the Philippian church, look, now that you forgot, now that you've looked, now it's time to press. Press is an action word. In other words, that means I got to do something about what God has for me. I don't know about you, but I'm excited for what God has for you in your life. I'm looking at some folks that I know it was a tough year in 2019, but God's got some things for you in 2020. God's ready to elevate you, promote you, and be a blessing, lift some burdens off you in 2020. I'm excited, but you gotta press. That means you gotta get to work. Means I gotta get to work. And so that's the how. Now let's take a moment to look at why we have moved forward. All right. All right. We go back in the text in verse number one. When we look at this text on today as intro, just want to ask, now that we know how and the resolution or the goal, the better lifestyle decision you have made, you want to go back to, you want to go to the gym. You want to balance your checkbook. Spend less. Watch what you say. Eat less. Count calories. Y'all kind of quiet. Let me start all over. Let me back this train up and start all over. Somebody might have said, I'm going to the gym this year. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to join the gym. I'm going to balance my checkbook. I'm going to watch what I say. I'm going to eat less. I'm going to count calories. I'm going to eat it. Y'all kind of quiet. Come on, I see a hand. I got a witness. All right. Somebody said, I'm going to pray more. I'm, I'm going to vote in 2020. Somebody else said, look, I'm, 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 going, I'm going to the doctor this year, and I'm going to get a health checkup. Somebody might say, I'm going back to school. Those are the hows. The whys is our focus on today. Why do you want to eat right? Because I want to get off that medication. Why do you eat right? So, uh, yeah. so I can have more energy in the service of the kingdom. Why do I want to save more money? So I don't have to stress. I can save money for vacation. Why? Do we do what we do? Let me let me get let me get you out of here. We gotta move forward in our relationship with Christ. Paul says, one of the things we gotta do is watch them dogs. Somebody say, watch them dogs. Let's see it in the text. I need some help with that. Right. Further, my brothers and sisters, the text says. Rejoice in the Lord. 
It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again. It is a safeguard to you. Watch out for them dogs, evildoers, mutilators of the flesh. For it is we who are circum as circumcision, we are the ones who are led by God's Spirit, who boast in Christ, and we have no confidence in the flesh. Though I myself have reasons for such confidence, Paul is sharing with the church at Philippi. He wanted to protect them from the dogs. Who are the dogs? The text says that was some folks running around the church who, who, who were telling folks that, that you had to be circumcised to be saved. They, they were going around unteaching what Paul had already taught. These, 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 Paul calls them dogs. These dogs were running around the church and the community trying to tell folks that works were going to get you into heaven. Dogs. He says, watch out for the dog. He says, the mutilators of the flesh. Pleasant Green, Paul is saying, look, if we're going to move forward in our relationship with him, we got to watch out for the dogs. The dogs was a term that, that, that they described the Gentiles. Dogs was given to someone who uh, referenced that they were unclean and unfit. In other words, the Jews were going around town talking about the Gentiles. Yes, sir. Calling them dogs. Well, I don't know about you, but we are no longer under the law. We know that we know how you get saved because Paul says, for we are saved for by grace are we saved through faith and not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, lest anyone should boast. In other words, they knew Paul was teaching, look, you're saved by grace. Yeah. Pleasant Green, let me encourage you in your walk with the Lord and in your relationship, I need to encourage you to watch out for the dogs. Y'all know we got some dogs, don't you? Y'all kind of quiet, let me see. Y'all know we got some big dogs, little dogs, pretty dogs, quiet dogs, yes, hairless dogs, skinny dogs, big dogs, little dogs, come on, y'all kind of quiet. Teethless dogs, dogs with a lot of teeth. In other words, there are some dogs waiting to get you and me. Still kind of quiet. Don't let me encourage you. You know, you got some dogs in your home. We got some dogs in the church. We got dogs in our community. We sure enough got a dog in the White House. Y'all kind of quiet on me today. That's all right. Dogs are everywhere. But I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that even though some dogs are all bark and no bite. Some dogs all bite and no bark. Some dogs look good but are up to no good. Some dogs are pretty. They walk up right. They think they own everything. Sometimes we got to watch out for the dogs. This is going to bless you if you let it because we got, we got some folks on our trail trying to distract us and get us away from what we believe. The text says, watch out for the dogs. Church say, neighbor, watch out for the dogs. They were a young church. And sometimes it can be impressionable when, when somebody comes with a new thing. And too many Baptists or Christians are leaving the church because the dog is telling them, this is how you ought to be saved. Amen. You got to sell bean pies. Amen. The Bible says, if we want salvation, it's by God's grace. Amen. And Pleasant Green, watch out for the dogs. And when you have a, a relationship with Jesus, you can see the dogs. Yeah. Now you gotta watch out for the dogs. Let the brother walk. Let me get a text says, you gotta watch out for the dog. All right. Let's see it in verse 7 and 8. Come on, look at your Bibles. As we move forward in our relationship with Christ, we gotta watch out for the dogs. 
But also the text says, watch out for the dumb. Mm -hmm. Verse 7 and 8. In the English Standard Version, that's what it said. But everything that was a gain to me, I have considered it to be a loss. Because of Christ, more than that, I've considered everything to be a loss in the view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ, my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I consider it all the harm. That I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness from my own faith. In other words, Paul is saying, look, everything that I've done means nothing. Compared to my relationship that I'm, I'm gaining with Jesus Christ. Paul has said, look, I, I, I'm not here on my own righteousness, but I'm here on the, by the righteousness of God. I have been made right because of my relationship with Jesus Christ. In other words, the text is clear that we're not supposed to put any confidence in the flesh. Paul said, look, I count everything. And y'all know Paul had a whole lot of gains. Paul had a whole lot of positive things in his life. But the text says, he counts it. He said, look, it's all dumb. Y'all know what dumb is. Some Bibles might say garbage. Garbage, dumb, either one is still no good. I love the text because every now and then, even in our relationship with Jesus Christ, we got to get rid of the dumb in our lives. Because a lot of us got, some of us got some dumb in our, y'all looking at me crazy. That's the text. The text says, Paul said, we got to forget about some things and move forward. And lastly, I'll leave you with this. Not only, let's go on. We got to move forward in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Anybody want a new relationship? Anybody want to improve the relationship? Anybody want a better relationship? Anybody want a closer relationship? The text says, watch out for the dogs. The second thing, it says, watch out for the dumb. And the last thing, I said, Paul, what can you share with us on today? Why, Paul, should we move forward? Why should we look at getting a better relationship? After all you've done, what is it in the text, Paul, that you can encourage us in all that we're going through? What is it? Why do we need to move forward? Why do we need a better relationship? I feel my help coming. Why is it today, Paul, we need to move forward? The text says that I may know him. See, y'all not going to help, but let me go. He says in verse 10a, 